you know, when you have to, to fly in everything you want to eat, you start to really pay attention to what's edible. Not necessarily what's delicious, but just flat out, what can I eat? My name's John Stokes. Um, my wife and I own the Terrasque Casino here in Oxford, Mississippi, and we are a typical kind of northeastern red sauce restaurant where it's pickup and delivery of spaghetti and meatballs and pastas and salads and things like that, and uh, creative output and things. We also do uh, highly elaborate 16, 20 course vegetable based chef tastings. I spent six seasons in, in Alaska in what they call the northwest part of the state, uh, about 20 miles inland on a river off of Norton Sound. We were just south of the Arctic Circle. I started initially in making these like very traditional five course meals up there. And when you stand back at it, from all of these things moving around and the, just the sheer cost of it, it didn't make a whole lot of sense. And so it, it caused a conundrum to me is like, hey, why the hell are we cooking this way back in Mississippi or wherever you happen to be in the lower 48 really? And then why the hell am I trying to do this up here? We just started it slowly, talking to the locals, the, the, the elders, especially downriver, somewhere around my third year or so there. There's a handful of small woody herbs. One in particular is called IUZ, A-Y-U-Z, that, that's really fantastic. It's a bit like rosemary. And started just bringing those in as garnishes. And then by the end of the sixth year, we were having five course meals that were completely Alaskan. And on top of that, they were completely Norton Sound. When I was a kid at the Oxford Library, in front of it was a pole barn. And all the, the truck patch farmers would come on Saturdays and Wednesdays, I believe, and just sell whole beans and tomatoes and watermelons and what, whatever, whatever they had grown. In the mid 80s, late 80s, it went, it just stopped happening. Idea of a farmer's market came back to town in like 2003, a small one that, that went for a couple of months during the summer. And then sometime around 2005, 2006, a, a bigger one started up. And now, you know, fast forward 10 years, there's two markets in town that operate twice a week, nine months out of the year, with at least six vendors at each. And within the circle I live in from Water Valley to Oxford, there's three small markets that buy and sell country produce and can support a farmer year round. When we came back, we were just, you know, so pleasantly surprised by how much the local food system's grown with farmers, um, with, you know, people who are interested in eating locally, the restaurants buying local. I'm John Martin. I'm a co-owner of Chicory Market. We had moved away from Mississippi for about 12 years, and um, we'd gotten involved in food in the Northeast with farmers markets and CSAs mainly on a volunteer basis. So this has been a, a market of some sort for about 30 years, over 30 years now. When we decided to do this because, because we wanted to keep it going, we were drawn to it because it's always been this important space in the community where you know, people across the community, all you know, socioeconomic levels, races, backgrounds, shop and feel comfortable shopping. So we were interested foremost as a community space and then second as a, as a place that could kind of be an engine of the local food system. We're a local full service grocery store and we, we uh, specialize in working with farmers to bring farm fresh local produce to uh, Oxford and Lafayette County as well as uh, over 50 food makers locally. We started with Liz, the same previous store that Chicory is today. You know, she did just like Chicory's doing. She she bought from local people. 
Oxford Produce or Batesville or wherever she was getting it from. I'm Matthew Britt. I'm with Clear Creek Produce and Farm, LLC. Farming's always been in my blood. When I was two years old and I wanted to go ride the tractor with Granddaddy, you know, so it's been there. It's always been there. So we started about eight years ago. Hey, why don't we just plant a garden type situation? I started with a $50 bill and I went and bought fertilizer and seed. So I started my own plants. We grew them. I didn't have a greenhouse then, so we grew them under fluorescent light bulbs. I started them that way. My product started ginning money. And then as other markets opened, you know, I started jumping on them. You know, I started at Midtown was the next market and then uh, the pavilion uh, along with a lot of different groceries you know they were like hey this guy's got some really good products word of mouth went a long way um, and then these um, cash savers called me and then the other, this other store called me and then I'm, I'm shipping stuff all the way from Jackson Mississippi to Ten Memphis Tennessee so we're, we're a little bit we're a little bigger than your average guy yeah, I'm, I'm, we're about 25 to 25, working on 30 acres this year. Um, so main thing right now is strawberries. It's been a slow start, you know. Of course, slow to me is, you know, a couple hundred pounds a day. Normally we ought to be hitting the five to six, 700 pound a day. We have some failures. I mean, I, I make terrible things sometimes and, but all in all, when, when things show up here, it, it gets turned into something pretty good. I'm not of the mind where it, everything has to be hyper-local. What those years in Alaska did, did cement is a true understanding of how beautiful nature is around us and how many things are readily available to us.